for women chungangadai and ss un tamil nadu chapter it gives me immense pleasure to introduce and welcome the dynamic resource person of today's session dr mg seduraman this eminent professor of chemistry is rendering commendable service in the field of academia and research at the gandhigram rural institute bindikar more than 70 scholars have been awarded doctoral degree under his efficient guidance his publications in national and international journals are a real testimony to his unique research caliber his dedication and flair for research has helped him to get two major projects funded by dst sap and fist the first project completed has a final outlay of 5.27 crores and the ongoing project is to the tune 170.57 lakhs his erudition and devotion has won him several awards he is the coordinator of special assistance program of ugc in recognition of his outstanding contribution as director of iqac he has honored with institutional responsibility award in 2018 by the vice president of india dr seduraman is the most suitable academician to address the faculty and orient them towards focused and meaningful activities and fit into the criteria defined by nag it was my genuine desire to bring him to our cam campus for an orientation program over a phone call he had the magnanimity to accept our invitation in the present pandemic scenario we are left with no other choice but to listen to him through the webinar sir we are really blessed to have you as a resource person for this program on behalf of the principal and faculty of the institution i accord a special welcome to you sir next i welcome all the participants hope you will have an interesting and interactive session thank you thank you so much ma'am so the platform is yours a very good evening all of you i am indeed honored by the invitation of uh, Ayappa College and SSU and TN. It's a pleasure to meeting you all through this platform. And uh, the topic that is given to me is uh, the towards excellence, the quality mandates in higher education system. We all know that education is for life. I think I can share the uh, PPT so that <clears throat> it will be useful for you. And uh, <clears throat> PPT. okay we all know that education is for life education is through life and education is throughout life in fact people have been struggling with the education system now due to this post pandemic scenario i do not know what all changes we are going to see in the near future once the university or colleges reopen we all know that the quality education is all about providing learners with the kind of capabilities they require to become economically productive vitamin m has become the <clears throat> foremost important thing in everybody's life so we need to become economically productive second is we we'll have to develop sustainable livelihood third we have to contribute for peaceful and democratic society and fourth we have to enhance the individual and societal well being of course such things like values and morality is not actually included here that is a sad thing that we have to share with this is the quality all about in the current scenario now what is actually the concept of higher education all about higher education system is meant for the production of qualified human resources unless the human i mean i mean the humanity is competent enough to face challenges we cannot see a development at all so we need to produce qualified human resources that is one second there should be training for the research career if we want the nation to prosper if we want the nation to develop we need to have some kind of research in a country with 140 or 135 uh, i mean crore population if you look at the number of people who are opting for research it is meager about 15000 only per year which means 
that we need to concentrate more on innovation more on research so we need to have a training for the research career of course we need to have an efficient management of teaching profession now it is not a easy task to manage a group of teachers in a college if you ask the principal probably he or she will be able to say the kind of i mean <clears throat> Uh, uh, I mean, efforts they have to take. So efficient management is needed, and then matter of extending career opportunities. Gone are the days mm-hmm. where we were tell. I mean, hearing that teaching, research, and extension are the three dimensions of education. Your placement has become the fourth dimension. Unless the students are assured that they will get some placement, the students will not join you at all. To that extent, everybody is becoming money conscious. everybody is becoming vitamin m conscious that is the kind of what mandate now we have so it has become imperative on the part of the universities and colleges to extend the matter of what extend the career opportunities in fact if i do not know how many of you how many colleges have gone for nirf 2020 now they are asking what is actually the median salary of the student what is the gross salary to that extent emphasis is given on the employment potential of the graduate so we need to actually find suitable career opportunity for the students who are studying so higher education is just what a production of qualified human resources we have to train for the research career and then we have to manage the teaching profession and not only that we have to look for adequate avenues for the stu- students to get placed then what is the function of higher education to we have to cater to the uh, skilled man poor needs of the nation please remember one thing nations needs keep changing prior to two, 2019 we had different sets of nation i mean the different sets of needs now 2020 survival has become the uh, i mean foremost so naturally our priorities have changed naturally the kind of uh, man poor you require to address the present day needs are very much different if you look at the number of industries which are vanishing from the scenario they say about 15 industries are going away which means there is going to be so much of change in this industrial sector in the livelihood of the people i mean uh, options of the available to the people in the very essence of human life you are going to see a sea of change so we will have to cater to the skilled man power needs of the nation please remember one thing india is going to emerge as the knowledge super power in another 2 to 3 years time we are going to become the skilled super power to the entire world uh, have we prepared ourselves to meet this kind of challenge are our students skilled do they have have they developed the required skills to address the manpower needs of the nation this is what is actually asked one second we have to prepare the students for research and teaching now teaching requires manpower for example to teach mathematics they say that not enough people are available now to that extent there is a dearth of teachers so you need to prepare the students for innovation for research and teaching and then we have to provide specialized training courses as per social and economic demands this is another thing that we need to concentrate upon because the social demand has changed we talk about new a term called new normalcy i do not know how much how for how long we are going to live with this kind of lockdowns and other such things restrictions probably we will not be able to see a crowded uh, campus at all in the um, for next 2 3 years i do not know whether we will be able to have a packed classroom in the coming years we, that's all going to become the pa- uh, thing of the past which means your i mean the societal changes demands are changing as per the need, the needs of the uh, i mean society and the economical needs we need to actually train up people so we have to organize specialized training courses we have to come up with newer ideas newer actually what i mean uh, i mean courses so that our students are able to address the needs that is one then to cater to the aspects of lifelong learning this is another thing learning does not stop with classroom at all in fact 22 into 7 type of learning is, is taking place we all say that we are producing society ready graduates 
we say that we are producing degree re uh, ready graduates i mean industry ready graduates we say that we are producing future ready graduates are they really industry ready are they really future ready i do not know we have to probably equip them with coping skills whatever be the change that is happening the student should be able to cope up with the kind of changes they require so we will have to cater to the aspects of all aspects of lifelong learning then to promote international cooperation through internationalization of research technology and networking see for this uh, the i mean the problem of covid to tackle covid they say that 19 countries have joined together and they are involving themselves in developing a vaccine which means what a collaborative effort a concerted effort has become the order of the day it is needed very much so a higher education should equip us to meet the challenges just not of today even of tomorrow then we need to have quality system in place we need to have quality education do we have a quality education in our country unfortunately with exponential increase in the number of uh, students and institutions quality seems to be the casualty here we don't really seem to be concentrating much on quality what exactly is the problem what we don't we have not understood the meaning of quality that exactly is the issue now the 10 core meanings of quality if you look at one is providing excellence you have to be towards excellence should always be our journey excellence should be the watchword are we keeping excellence as the priority i do not know why i mean we are why we are not doing that one existence is given more a priority rather than excellence so our journey should be towards excellence and we have to take every venture every small move towards providing excellence that is one second we have to be exceptionally good unless an institution is exceptionally good it will not be able to attract students at all there are colleges even after a decade of its inception okay they are not able to attract students why quality is really not up to the mark they are not able to deliver goods to the expected levels of the students or the other stakeholders so we need to be exceptionally good second third is providing value for the money students are paying for 5000 or 6000 per semester for a bsc degree or a ba degree the money that they give okay it should be worth so they are asking is it this this six months course which i am undergoing is it worth the money i am spending or paying as a fees that is what the students are asking so we have to provide value for the money and then conforming to specifications are we able to conform to the ugc's dictates ugc says as prescribed certain rules mhrd has prescribed certain rules aict has come out with some kind of set of regulations so it is all for the good of the nation good of the education in this country but unfortunately are we trying to follow this kind of specifications no for example to be a teacher in a institution you need to have a phd or a net or slet do we have all teachers with that kind of uh, qualifications maybe probably iipa college will have there may be many other colleges which may not really have teachers with that kind of qualification which is actually prescribed by ugc which means the institutions are not conforming to specifications day see even after covid 19 every day ugc seems to be working day and night giving out guidelines to tackle the, the uh, menace of covid they are giving so many directions to the students to the institutions to the vice chancellor to the principals etc how many of the institutions are responding in the proper way i do not really know so whatever ugc says we have to say yes whatever mhrd says we have to really i mean conform to those kind of dictates so we need to adopt the kind of specifications we do we need to actually bring out the changes so that we adhere to the norms set forth by ugc or mhrd or aict or medical council of india or other bodies other statutory bodies getting things right the first time we need to prioritize are we prioritizing we don't sometimes actually address the things properly for example nation has got an agenda 
all our i mean activities in the institution should add, i mean align with the national agenda if the central government says certain things we may have to follow ruthlessly and our goal and activities objectives should all be aligned with the objective of the government unfortunately we don't see even seem to be knowing what the priorities of government of india is for example uh, there is actually a portal called national plat i mean a teacher platform how many of the teachers know about it i don't really know there are i mean certain initiatives like diksha of the central government how many teachers are actually aware of such initiatives i do not know whether it, why these things have not percolated level to um, percolated to the level of the teachers i think the administrators the managements the governance governing governing bodies should they take enough and more pains to see to see that the policies and the efforts of the government are really popularized among the teachers only then it will reach the students then meeting customers needs see students need some kind of what students have some kind of priorities pa- parents have some kind of priorities industry requires some kind of pri- i mean uh, uh, i mean priorities so you need to address those needs so needs and aspirations of the students teachers these other stakeholders and the society should be addressed i do not know how many of you have uh, learnt about a system called education 4.0 throughout the world the I mean, universities and colleges are adopting themselves to this education 4.0 in india slowly we have started talking about it we all say that we are aligning our uh, curriculum to industrial revolution 4.0 so industrial revolution 1.0 actually started with the invention of a steam engine in i mean industrial revolution 2.0 actually went with the Uh, invention of electricity invention 3.0 actually started with the introduction of computers and electronic gadgets now introduction 4.0 is all about what the automation have we aligned our curriculum to see that the future manpower requirements of the industry are really met we don't really know so we, we are not addressing the industrial needs at all we should understand the needs of the industry and then try to ad- i mean what address it then having zero defects no system will be free from defects but unfortunately we are not really addressing the uh, the defects we don't really ensure a zero defect at all in at the institutional level in fact if there are some problems we should at least render a listening ear to those people who have genuine complaints or genuine grievances such strategies are not even really actually uh, available it is not really i mean uh, there such grievance mechanisms even are not available at the university level or at the college level in many places providing added value see students these days are really smart what the for the kind of fees they are paying they really want something more in return the institutions are also now saying that we are not i mean providing a bsc degree we are not really teaching you for ma we are giving ma plus they say that we are giving bsc plus that means what they are giving something additional add on courses they are actually offering so providing added value for the uh, what degree so that is really needed so we need to actually equip the students with additional capabilities so that they are able to adjust to the needs of the future then exhibiting fitness for the purpose if a boy actually uh, scores a, a, i mean first class with high distinction from an autonomous college that should be regarded by everybody the, the entire society should accept that this college has the uh, capability to assess properly and give an award a degree with first class with ex- award with uh, i mean distinction and all that so exhibiting fitness for the purpose is really needed so this is these are the core meanings of quality how many such quality institutions are there in our country please remember one thing our institutions were known for quality in i mean earlier days 
i do not know how many of you know that we have before even the advent of university system in this country we have dakshashila and nalanda very huge educational campuses were there we had quality system in place we had the gurukula system in place we had a task oriented examination system in place do we have all these things unfortunately we have reduced ourselves to textbooks and what the three hour two hour examinations and all that whereas this kind of task oriented varied assessment tools have been taken up by other countries and we are only following the macaulay system of education which really produces only clerical level people no a careful design by the uh, i mean invaders have reduced our capabilities i would say that we should really get out of that and get into our ancient system so that we are able to regain our past glory that is one you may ask me why should there be quality one is there is a fear competition there is a rat race among the institutions among the graduates among the industries to grab the best possible manpower so competition is one thing so naturally if we have to live up to the expectation of the stakeholders if you have to stay alive in the competition we need to bother really very much about the quality that is one second is customer satisfaction you cannot have a system continued for long without ensuring the satisfaction of the teachers or the students or the uh, parents so they all need to be very much satisfied so what is the kind of mechanism that we have to ensure the satisfaction of all these stakeholders many institutions are now trying to develop uh, they are trying to get feedback not only to get feedback to act on the feedback also to have a kind of system where we they are able to ensure the satisfaction of all the stakeholders in fact many autonomous institutions are now even the universities are trying to come up with the kind of strategies they are able to have for example they have an a representative from the industry they have a representative from the alumni they have a representative from the present students their views are really heard and they try to implement their views thereby they are able to satisfy their aspirations and needs that is one then we have to maintain standards the moment uh, you talk about standards our people compare themselves with oxford with stanford with mit and such institutions of course who is we there is nothing wrong in comparison but should we not take efforts to elevate ourselves how many of us are really spending time to elevate the standard of our own institutions the moment you have a tough question paper there are complaints from the students that it is really not up to i mean there are difficulty level is too much some of the teachers also complain okay so the moment you start maintaining standards the people really start complaining as a result of which we are forced to sometimes compromise on quality then accountability do we have accountable are the students suppose if the student after spending 5 years of life in a campus comes back and says that i have learned nothing i am not able to get a good job okay what will be the reply that we will be giving them are we not accountable to them are we not accountable to the industry are we not accountable to the society as teachers so accountability is there don't please think that accountability should only be there for the teachers not for others everybody is accountable fine then improve employee morale and innovation see you need to actually satisfy the needs of the teachers unless the teachers are really satisfied they cannot but the best cannot be brought from them so you need to address you need to keep up their morale then innovation is needed innovation it's a, this is a fast changing society you need to really embark on such things which really produce a positive change for a new problem you can find a new solution or for an existing problem you can find a new solution that is innovation are we i mean involving ourselves in innovation no are our i mean does our system permit us to be really innovative no our examination system is one size fit all thing we do not go on experimenting at all so what actually we don't we are not encouraged to do innovation a boy 
at that age for example a 19 year old boy he will be full of ideas if he comes to a class thinking that he can implement whatever he has dreamt of do we provide him with avenues adequate avenues to do innovation not much only textbooks things are really learnt and he has to carefully vomit everything into the examination paper that is the kind of level to which we have reduced ourselves then there should be credibility what is the kind of credibility that we have i do not know how many of you know that if you look at the number of autonomous colleges the autonomous colleges are very much higher in states like andhra pradesh tamil nadu and all that now if you compare some of the mark marks of the autonomous colleges before they become autonomy the uh, pass percentage is much less once they are empowered with autonomous status their pass percentage is much higher what does it mean does it mean to say that they are given autonomous status to only increase their pass percentage are they showing credibility this is the kind of question that people ask and then image of an institution visibility of the institution all that is really needed so to ensure quality we need to have what we should be able to survive in the competition we should be able to ensure customer satisfaction we have to maintain very high standards that is needed and then we should be accountable to all the stakeholders we have to boost the morale of the employees we have to be highly innovative our uh, we should have a greater degree of credibility our image should be better visibility should be greater so why these things are needed why that is why we need quality still i mean institutions which have emphasizing on quality naturally they are able to come out of the competition they are able to satisfy the customers they are able to maintain standards they are accountable they have credibility they have a good image and visibility now what is the kind of trends and challenges that we have the demand for higher education is expanding rapidly we have only 14% of people going for higher education system some year some years back now it is 29% 29% of our population is going for higher education institutions at the world level the threshold level is 42% in another 5 to 6 years time government of india wants to have at least uh indian institutions to reach the world threshold level there is a phenomenal explosion number of higher education institutions if you go for a walk in the old mahabalipuram road in chennai 150 institutions are there to that extent number of institutions have increased exponentially by 2020 40% of the global workforce will be knowledge workers majority of them are going to be from india with covid 19 majority of the industries are shifting they they say that they are shifting from japan to countries like vietnam indonesia malaysia and india if we have to uh, i mean welcome the such institutions or organizations to our country we need to be really skilled what force workforce and quality should be the watchword it should not be a casualty in the entire process of course there are challenges what are the challenges that we have one is we have to make education accessible to as many as possible now years back only certain sections of society had the privilege of uh, uh, i mean taking up to education now it's all gone the fruits of reservation as i mean gone into the root as a result of which accessibility increased access we are able to ensure so education is accessible one second we have to ensure quality of education provided is worthwhile every institution is now applying for nac whether we like it or not nac is actually <coughs> a welcome devil okay i do not know how many of you know but for nac many institutions would not have gone even for white washing it is a necessary evil i used to always say nac is a necessary evil it ensures quality of education over the years it has perfected its uh, uh, i mean parameters and other things so to that extent at least now institutions are little more quality conscious compared to the yester years then we have to provide education at reasonable cost what is the unit cost of education if you look at the unit cost of education our unit of cost of education is much less of course 
the kind of fees that we are levying on the students is also much less when compared to many other countries in fact tamil nadu we have the, at the up to the undergraduate level there is no fees at all in government institutions to that extent we have made the uh, education affordable then higher education in india india is passing through a phase of unprecedented expansion number of volume of students is increasing exponentially number of institutions are going up just like that level of public funding is also has increased every day there is some announcement even in during this crisis period about the funding such as those people who have innovative ideas they are uh, they are actually welcomed by such agencies like dst serb now there was an announcement yesterday like uh, uh, to train teachers on entrepreneur development skills okay so the kind of funding they are going to give to increase to upskill people is really good so initiatives are really taken by the government only thing is we need to, to follow and follow it up and then make use of so that kind of what uh, avenues then what are the kind of challenges that we have see the challenges is one thing is efforts taken has resulted in increase in the enrollment there is an enormous increase in the enrollment there is a, a kind of reduction in the overall social disparities but we will be able to ensure in the coming days post covid situation is going to call for what online teaching and all that of course such of those who are able to afford to androids will be able to probably perform better there is going to be a digital divide among the people how are we going to really i mean narrow down this kind of disparities that is one second are we able to have an increased access to higher education to the international threshold levels during this uh, pandemic scenario that is one thing then there are also challenges also distribution of institution is skewed i was telling you some time back there are 150 institutions in one single road there are also some places in our country for for about 15 radius kilometer radius there is no education institution at all which means there is not a balanced distribution of institutions in this country that is one second enrollment in public universities is concentrated only in conventional disciplines you are not able to have <laughs> in a cutting edge area for example in gene technology if you want to start a program in uh, a post graduate program in gene technology it is not that easy to start in a public university whereas private university if it is actually for money they will start overnight okay if that is going to attract people they will be able to do it overnight so the the enrolled enrollment in public universities is concentrated only in conventional disciplines enroll in private self financing institution is concentrated in all market driven disciplines vitamin m is actually what the prime factor education institutions are becoming slowly malls as a result of which so people are only after money so such of those courses or academy programs which fetch money will be concentrated by these kind of self financing institutions that is another problem then quality of education are we able to ensure quality of education then are we providing the relevant education please remember one thing just because other countries introduce semester system we also introduced just because others introduce choice based credit system we have also introduced choice based credit system what is the kind of education system that we have for this country which whether that i mean system whether it will suit us we don't really i mean debate at all providing relevant education is really a challenge this country is known for certain things we have got certain ancient values accordingly we have to devise our system but unfortunately we only ape the west and we forget our glorious past that is one of the i mean mistakes that we are making as a result of which our quality is becoming a casualty one the performance of the indian higher education institutions at global level if you look at the scenario there is no place for any of the indian institutions in the top 100 institution at the world level if you look at the asian level one or two institutions of our country find a place of course 24th place there is no place in the top 25 b schools at all low ranking in the relative global scale if you look at the quality ranking you are not able to find any of our institutions at all 
there is a matter of concern of course nac has come with a for accreditation framework if you look at the nac's framework for quality enhancement there are five i mean i mean aspects one is the institution should contribute for national development are we contributing for national development what is actually the national priorities are we aligning our priority to that of the nation for example skill india program make in india program okay start up india program there are so many things which has been spelled out by the government how many institutions are responding i do not know whether institutions have started indian i mean innovation development cell the government of india has insisted upon the kind of innovation development centers to be created in the uh, institutions there are still only 25 to 30% of the institutions which have uh, given or which have developed centers for innovation so we have to contribute for national development second we have to foster global competencies among students we are not preparing students for karate humbatti we are preparing students for canberra so how how many of us are thinking in terms of that does our teaching conform to the international standard does our curriculum conform to an international standard do we actually provide them with all that kind of coping skills to enable them to work in new jersey or houston or canberra or in other places so are we able to foster global competencies that is what uh, they are asking second third is inculcating value system among students we had moral science and all that in the extra years but unfortunately we seem to have what uh, concentrating very much uh, less on these kind of value systems at all inculcating value system among the students promoting the use of technology now this is another thing boys are much better than the teachers so they are able to have an edge over the teachers even to that extent technology has actually uh, pervaded into the minds of the uh, students then there is a quest for excellence there should be real quest for excellence but unfortunately the i mean teachers and the institutions are compromising on quality then what is the revised nac accreditation norms all about there is a shift there is a kind of shift one is a shift from qualitative peer judgment to data based quantitative evaluation if you look at the nac aspect earlier a team used to come and they used to make an on the spot study and they used to declare the result and all that that was actually a qualitative peer judgment now everything is data based they are asking for proof how much is actually the percentage revision so everything is quantified and asked naturally the institutions have to probably respond in terms of quantity so data based quantitative evaluation the problem with many of the institutions are we are not keeping evidences at all documentation is not not really proper in most of the institutions unfortunately with nac and nirf and such agencies only documentation speaks so every teacher every principal every administrator should spend enough and more time in building up the documentation we need to have a data center we need to actually what uh, i mean keep and preserve all sorts of evidences then the process is very much simplified 300 odd questions were there before now it's all about 98 to 120 questions introduction of a pre qualifier for a team visit <clears throat> only <clears throat> if the institutions have 30 percentage of uh, i mean earned marks <clears throat> the peer team visit will visit otherwise it will not visit at all there is an introduction of system generated score with online evaluation to the extent of 70% so that is there then third party validation of data earlier there was no verification of our data at all we used to say that our journal that we have published is the best in the world they never used to ask whether it is i mean uh, covered by scopus database or web of science now they are asking such things they are going into the proof that we have submitted there is a process called data verification and validation so there 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 is a validation of data is actually taking place so this is actually the change that has taken place of course if you look at the quality framework of nac it has seven I mean, criteria the first criteria is on curricular aspects of course if your college is autonomous they ask what is actually the kind of design that you have if you it is a non autonomous college or affiliated college they are asking what is the kind of implementation strategy that you have 
Unfortunately, many of the institutions do not really have even a lecture schedule. A teacher should he not plan well ahead of the class and say that this is all going to be a my lecture schedule. You need not go to be very. You need not have to be very exact. At least this particular portion will be covered in three hours time. This will be covered in two hours time, which means you should be able to have a tentative lecture plan. So curricular aspects. There should be some. What is the kind of feedback that you have? What is the kind of see? Does your curriculum address other things like, for example, uh, your professional ethics or environment or gender equality? All that they are actually asking. So all about curricular aspects is covered by this criteria one. Basically, our higher education institutions are teaching based, which means there is more weightage for teaching, learning, and evaluation process. they are asking what is exact what exactly is the teaching methodology that we have unfortunately till covid 19 we were concentrating more only on talk chalk and talk overnight the teachers have switched over to the online teaching now there is a competition between colleges on holding webinars in fact webinars have become web boring hours to that extent every day the teachers are forced to attend two to three webinars not only that they have online classes also so teaching learning is becoming ict based slowly evaluation is another thing what is the kind of evaluation that we have as i said some time back we need to have a task oriented evaluation multiple strategies we have to have for evaluation so are we having transparent system that all that they are asking under this heading that is teaching learning and evaluation which carries very high percentage of weightage then research innovation and extension and a higher education institution should embark on research if you don't have research in a higher education institutions then it is not really fit to be called as a higher education institution at all because teaching without research is like food without salt so you need to have some kind of what research input given to the students then innovation should be there then extension should be there so teach teachers should be able to extend their knowledge to the community how many outreach programs that you have got what kind of collaborations you have got with the society what kind of linkages you have with other institutions community based organizations all that they are really asking that is your research innovation extension if it is an autonomous college you will have greater weightage if it is a aided college you will have lesser weightage then student support and progression that is actually the i mean infrastructure and learning resources is the fourth criteria please remember one thing unless you have adequate infrastructure the students will not be able to be lured at all if you want to really attract the students you must have a good infrastructure not only that you must have enough number of classrooms you must have enough number of what the library books the computing systems enough number of laboratories good uh, equipment should be available all that is has become indispensable things so you need to have a proper infrastructure learning resources should be available then you should have a proper student support mechanism which is very much needed see please remember that students have to be supported just not for academic activities alone for extra curricular activities for co curricular activities do you have nss do you have irc do you have red ribbon club do you have ncc what is the kind of support system that you have do they do you provide a comfortable life in their hostels all that really have how many of your students from ug to pg they go where do they go to which type of institutions do they go are they able to secure a seat in iits are they able to secure a seat in iisc or national level organizations or they are able to go down to an institution which is actually lower when compared to our even institutions even such things people are asking then governance leadership and management is another thing what kind of governance that you have what kind of leadership is there we all pay i mean powers only vested with management are teachers empowered do the students have some say in the administration they are such things then institutional values and best practices unfortunately many institutions do not have practices at all what is the kind of uh, green measures that you are doing are you taking enough and more uh, i mean uh, measures to celebrate 
uh, national days and all that what is the kind of value system that you have do you have any code of conduct for the teachers for the principal for the students and all that what is the kind of practice that you have in the institutions all these things are asked if you look at these seven parameters or criteria i think i would say that nac has done a wonderful thing over the years they have done their homework problem is like since we are not really focusing on quality many institutions are able not able to adjust themselves i would say that getting a gray gray from nac is not the end of everything public perception is more we have to live up to the expectation of the society we have to live up to the expectation of the teachers students and all that so we have to think in terms of beyond nac okay so don't be plus satisfied with a grade or a plus by nac alone go beyond that for our sake we need to have what a kind of uh, i mean uh, <clears throat> i mean we need to have uh, we need to actually have these kind of systems in place let me come to the distribution of marks i was telling you that under the nac criteria there are seven criteria and there are about 31 or 32 or 34 uh, key indicators depending whether your institution is an autonomous college or a ug college or a pg college number of the quality metrics qualitative metrics also is varying from 35 to 36 or 37 and then quantitative metrics are numbers more it varies from 58 to 72 and then total metrics actually is varying from 93 to 107 so the mean, distribution of metrics is very much very much important look at the way the uh, the kind of weightage you have for the quantitative metrics unless you have emphasis on quantitative aspects your institution will not be able to get a grade at all which means you will have to look for quantitative metrics accordingly you have to also go for building up the evidences in support of all these quantitative metrics but institutions are finding it difficult they say that during that principal's time all that happened during that head of the department's time all that happened and in many of the self financing co co colleges there is a floating population a teacher as long she wants that uh, he gets married she will be in that college the moment she gets married she will go to her husband place naturally as a result of which uh, the data also goes with her so when the new head of the department comes and asks she says that it was all taken by the previous teacher or predecessor such complaints you are able to hear as a result of which so since the attrition rate is more with regard to the faculty members in self financing colleges they are not able to have a uh, what a documentation system but we need to build up a documentation system in any institution now what are the things that we should be really worried uh, with, uh, with regard to nac one is curricular design what is the kind of design that you have for curriculum second how much you you are planning and implementing so for an affiliated colleges there is a weightage for planning and implementation that is why i said you must prepare a lecture schedule now, what is the kind of uh, how do you implement it is there any monitoring mechanism for it what is the kind of flexibility that you give see please remember one thing there is a diverse need of the students so st some students uh, like would like to pursue in one particular direction even in the same discipline for example a computer science student would like to do something on image processing so he would like to take more courses related to image processing etc are we really giving him avenues to choose his own ch subjects but unfortunately we have compulsory electives in the uh, colleges we have we say that for this particular class this is the elective all students are forced to take a particular elective nac is against that what is the kind of flexibility that you are giving you call the system as choice based credit system but the choice is neither given to the teacher nor to the student we don't have enough number of classrooms we don't have enough number of uh, uh, teachers so where is the question of giving choice to the students so but nac is insisting on flexibility what is the kind of curricular enrichment that actually takes place do you have teachers from other places okay do you do periodical revision of the syllabus do you actually conduct workshops do you have some kind of extra credit courses do you have some modular streams all that they are actually asking that is flexible i mean enrichment then i mean academic feedback 
have you got any feedback from the students what is the kind is it a ritual to collect feedback or do you take action on the feedback that is the thing so all the about 150 marks for this particular exercise alone then the second criteria if you look at teaching learning evaluation it has a maximum weightage you should see even a bank has a thing called know your customer how many of the higher education institutions have data on the kind of students they are getting in the undergraduate and postgraduate programs see are they from rural areas are they from urban areas are they girls are they boys are they from cbsc stream or state board how many of them have mother tamil as a mother tongue or other languages as mother tongue how many of the married students are coming you should you should know the profile of the students only you know only if you know the kind of students you are getting you will be able to address their needs unfortunately majority of the institutions are not really worried about the type of students we don't really get to know what they really want so we have to actually give please remember one thing everything is becoming personalized in another 2 to 3 years time we will not really be having courses like bsc uh, chemistry with the physics and uh, mathematics as ancillaries that will all go away it is the, he'll say that i want 10% of electronics 15% of sociology 20% of economics and 40% of physical chemistry he will prepare some kind of what combination and probably he'll come and ask us to give so that kind of competency based curriculum that kind of student friendly or student centric curriculum is going to be designed so that is the going to be the need then catering to student diversity are we here to cater to only the best students if a student really is weak should we not really encourage him and then uh, uh, mainstream him what is the kind of care that we are taking we need to address so if he is a weak student what is the strategy if he is a fast learner what is the strategy so we need to adopt that then what is the kind of teaching learning process this is one thing that we are very much not emphasizing we say that we do what game based learning project based learning active learning cooperative learning but in practice we don't seem to be doing that at all ict based tools are there there is some kind of inertia there is some kind of hesitation all that so please see that diverse teaching methodologies are really adopted the present day students ask if you can't teach the way i can understand better you change your teaching style or method so that you can make me understand so this is the kind of demand the students are placing before us so diverse teaching learning strategy should be there what kind of teachers are we having teacher profile is very much needed i mean you should have a phd ha hands you must ha have qualified slet net hands so teacher profile should be high quality teachers should be there experienced teachers should be there expert should be teaching that is needed evaluation process and reforms what is the kind of evaluation process do you have internal assessment do you have an external uh, i mean examination what is the weightage for internal do you have continuous formative assessment or you have only a summative assessment what is the kind do you have weightage only for the written examinations or you give them some project and uh, do you give some weightage for experiential learning processes all that they are really asking look at the type of uh, i mean weightage 200 if it is a university 300 for an autonomous college i think it is 350 if it is a affiliated college research innovation extension what are the kind of uh, strategy that you promote to research when I mean, you have to promote the research do you have do you have enough facilities for research are you able to mobilize research i mean grants for research please remember one thing quality research should be there publish or perish was a stone or slogan of yesterday now people are asking publish flourish and cherish you need to have what tie ups with industry you should have startups in the campus you have you should have innovation development cells in the campus so there should be an innovation ecosystem in the campus your publication should also be a quality one people are emphasizing on h index people are emphasizing on citation index they are emphasizing on impact factor so you, they say that you should publish only in scopus index journal they say that you should publish only in web of science index journal that means quality is given some kind of priority 
see that this priority really gets into your what i mean mind also so have some quality publications and what is the kind of award your people have got are you able to generate some amount of money through consultancy what is the kind of extension activities that you have what is the kind of community linkage that you have how well your institution is connected to the community how well the community is benefited out of the uh, i mean uh, interaction with your institution what is the kind of collaborative that you have whether you have co collaboration for training the students or for giving them job or for their internship or designing the curriculum what is the kind of curriculum or conducting a seminar symposia or a knowledge partnership or a research partnership all that they are asking so collaboration should also be there next physical facilities i as i told you some time back students are really choosy they want to have good buildings good laboratories do good computational uh, facilities they must have good library so all those facilities should be good unfortunately facilities are really not enhanced to the extent it should be of course many private institutions are able to enhance the facilities only government institutions because of the uh, i mean dearth of funds and all that they are not able to uh, do to the extent vit or satyabhama or the shastra has done it so physical facilities one of course they collect more fees government does not do that that is one thing then library as a learning resource see how what is actually the number kind of books that you have unfortunately libraries do not attract students how many of our staff members go to the library we are not able to see any staff member going to the library if you look at the average walk ins it is very much less if you look at the number of students going to the library just before nac students some are forced to go to the library staff are forced to go to the library otherwise there is not a natural tendency for students or staff to go to the library at all and what is the kind of how many books are there for every student there should be at least 18 books okay if there are 200 students there should be 3600 books at least but do we have such a big library in any institutions no one is to 15 or one is to 18 you must have we don't have it infrastructure gone are the days where people were talking about student teacher ratio now people are asking for student computer ratio are we having enough system for a, i mean a college in karnataka there were only 850 students there are 1400 computers so to that extent number of system is more the kind of servers is more the wifi campus enabled campus is there so all systems are all in i mean all computational facilities are really excellent please remember one thing with education 4.0 every student is going to be taught artificial intelligence whether he is an art student or a science student he is going to be taught internet of things he is going to be taught about augmented reality he is going to be talked uh, taught i mean uh, taught about uh, such disciplines like forecasting mechanism optimization techniques and all that so ugc also has come out with new old degree systems a tamil boy a student learning tamil probably has to do a degree in journalism also chemistry with commerce so all that may become a order of the day a engineering degree with commerce an engineering degree with economics you would have seen in papers so please remember that you have to go for such curricular innovations because the world is not like what it was yesterday there was an industry called tourism industry where is the tourism now aviation i don't know what kind of challenge they are going to have automobile what kind of challenge they are going to have they say that 15 to 16 industries they are going to vanish so how are we going to build your migrant labor go 48 lakh people have migrated from one place to another will they return what kind of workforce we will be having in the future we don't really know it is all going to be a challenge we have to live up to the challenge okay please consider every challenge as an opportunity i'm sure that we will be able to do that then coming to back to the main story what is the kind of student support system that we have what is the kind of host, do do you have hostel facilities do you give them scholarship or governmental scholarships available do you have non governmental private scholarships given what is the kind of student progression how many of your students go from ug to pg pg to mphil or phd all that they are asking and then student participation activities 
how many of them have participated national level or international but unfortunately we say that among the intra college at functional between between bcom and ba literature there was a match and our boy got first prize please do not compel i mean compare yourself with your neighbors they are asking for national level international level inter not intra college at at the university level at the state level at the national level so please see that you encourage participation of students then alumni engagement there should be close linkage between the alumni and the college not only they should help the college in kind they should also be able to support in terms of money also nac says that if they are able to give 25 lakhs and above credit is actually more so to that extent students should be able to willingly donate to their institutions so 100 marks for this criteria namely student support and progression please remember third is actually 250 marks for universities about 150 for colleges and then uh, fourth criteria 100 marks and then again student support around 140 for affiliated colleges and for uh, autonomous college it is 100 and then governance what is your vision what is your mission we don't really have this kind of thinking at all if you go to many of the institutions if you read the vision statement or mission statement Uh, you are not able to really digest at all see what should be your mission to become a global leader to go, become an institution of eminence to become an institution of world class that should be your actually uh, aim but we are not spelling out our vision what should be your mission what do you want to achieve in teaching what do you want to achieve in research what do you want to achieve through extension activity that we should really list unfortunately we are not doing that then strategy development if you ask your principal what is your strategic plan or perspective plan many are not able to come out no institution does i mean has a perspective plan or strategic plan every institution should develop what is your long term goal what is your short term goal within 5 years period what will be your status after 10 years how will your institution be we should be able to dream please remember one thing world is only for people who dream you should be a good dreamer okay so abd as abdul kalam said okay so this is what you should uh, I mean uh, your dream is not one which you get out of sleep the dream is one which disturbs you in your sleep okay so you should make you more or do more work i am sure that you will be able to do work okay so kanavugal kanavugal enbade thoonga vidamal thurathuvathu kanavu so that is the kind of vision that you must have see that you dream of an institution which is really good for this country the kind of patriotism the kind of uh, vision you should lo the love and affection that you have for this country that should really be unparalleled that should really be what be in you so through your as a teacher every day you should see that through this venture i am going to change the destiny of this country that is the kind of vision that you must have so please see that i used to always say that this is actually a kind of yajna this is a kind of worldly okay so you are embarking on a kind of yajna so see that you contribute your best so that you are able to transform this country you are able to transform this okay fine and then what is the kind of faculty empowerment strategy that you have what is the kind of management i mean financial management that you have how are you uh, mobilizing your resources all that they are asking what is the kind of system that you have iqac system that you have many institutions what they do is just that year in which the college goes for accreditation they keep the iqac open one of the first things they do after accreditation is to, is to close the iqac you don't have functional iqacs in many institutions please remember one thing iqac should be functional every i mean a month there should at least be one meeting of iqac there should be some faculty development program so see that iqac is vibrant active as an man director of the iqac for eight long years i know the agony of an iqac coordinator but still i would say that we must have a functional iqac in the college and then this is 100 marks for this governance then you have institutional values and best practices what is the kind of value system that you have in the institution 
please remember one thing the kind of heritage this country has is unparalleled the kind of value system you have in this country you cannot really have in other countries at all you can other countries cannot even dream but unfortunately where have we lost all these things we don't really know so probably institutions like ssu and only is actually trying to bring back the glory so we must have a value system we must instill a social responsibility among students teachers and the institutions what are the kind of best practice that you have now maintaining a herbal garden is a best not a best practice and practice which will really improve the quality of the system which will increase the image of the system which will increase the visibility of the system that should really be regarded as the best practice so what they have a kind of value system that you have in this institution which really makes it a tall institution that should really be focused what is the distinctiveness of the institution some institutions are 25 years old if you ask them what is that this institution has worked for in a unique way we are not able to say why because distinctiveness is the one area which really we have not thought about it we must be unique there should be some kind of signature what is the kind of signature that you have suppose somebody ask you what is actually your trademark what is your focused area of action what is actually your signature we are not able to come out what is your usp unique selling proposition they are asking see please remember you should have some kind of distinctiveness also try to develop please remember nac has come out with so many innovations i have given the notable differences uh, like uh, then it was uh, uh, like uh, you have to uh, sub- give a letter of intent now institutional information for quality assurance once you give iaqa data you cannot change it you should be very firm about the numbers number of students number of faculty number of publications number of uh, uh, phd gates uh, all that you should be really uh, i mean fixed so please prepare your self study report and then fill up your iaqa there are seven criteria key aspects have changed number of questions have changed now we have gone to online mode there is no evaluative report data verification system is there student satisfaction survey is there benchmarking is applied system enabled selection is there on site visit is there peer team report is actually restricted only to qualitative metrics there is no peer document peer team document at all then there should be what no deviation from uh, what you have given to nirf or ashe see there there should be data what unison the sense that there should not be da- no deviation okay so the data should not differ largely between the uh, various sources for example for nir of some colleges give 3000 as the strength for ashe they give 3500 for nag they give 2500 as a student strength how can there be so much of variation it is happening so nac says that if the deviation is more than 15% then there will be penalty now what is the need of the hour need of the hour is one is we have to have outcome based education please remember one thing learning out framework of education learning outcome i mean framework okay learning outcome framework loc is actually asked so we have to progress i mean focus on the program educational objective program outcome course outcome program specific outcome and all that so it is all based on outcomes we have to concentrate on outcomes one second is our curriculum should be relevant don't please include that when portion which is blindly followed in west this country has rich heritage this country has got some uniqueness so involve such i mean i mean such things so look into the aspects of this country what is native to this country the best aspects of this country we should be able to uh, teach the students so relevant curriculum updated curriculum every 3 years we should re- re- revise the syllabus are we doing it we don't need based intervention should be there every year also you can Uh, i mean update the syllabus flexibility should be there uniqueness should be there how does your bcom differ from the bcom of the neighboring college if you ask you are not able to say inclusion of cross cutting issues see things are changing very fast we uh, five years back people did not talk about big data analytics now they are talking about five years back people did not talk about fuzzy logic people are talking about 
people are not talking about augmented reality years back now they are talking about augmented reality so include such things focus on employability how see please they say that 16% of our students are only employable the focus is not on employability industries are not able to make use of the students because what they need we are not teaching there is a complaint are we developing the skills do we have internship do we have on job training are we making uh, i mean industry ready graduates so skill development it is not there then focus on value based education is a very very good thing one majority of the uh, when crimes and other things are uh, taking place because higher education lacks this component please remember the cultural heritage of country should naturally force you to go for value based education unfortunately our education is not really value based so this has to be really concentrated upon ugc is taking enough uh, uh, i mean steps the state government and the central governments are taking enough steps we must have value based environment in the institutions then stakeholder satisfaction the student unless he is satisfied he will not continue teachers have to be satisfied teachers i mean students have to be satisfied industries have to be satisfied so stakeholder satisfaction is needed adherence to academic calendar see this is one thing we can't just have uh, i mean examinations as we like there should be even how much of care ugc is taking now to design an uh, examination calendar every day they are really having meetings after meetings to see that uh, they are, there is a national plan for holding the examinations for plus 2 for 10th and for degree look at the way the government is really working the kind of methodology that you adopt novel teaching methodologies i said diverse teaching methodology should be there we should not have one size fit all people may not be able to write a 3 hour examination does it that, that doesn't mean that the boy is not really good if he can speak well why don't you ask him to speak instead of writing so you must have this kind of task varied based varied system of education i mean examination proof full proof system should be there quality research should be there there should be sustained funding we should be able to mobilize funding for research institutions may not be able to give money at all so you should be able to apply for projects so when will you get apply i mean apply for projects only if you have good number of publications you will be able to attract funding through projects <clears throat> then increased awareness now patents have become very popular trademarks patents then geographic index so you should concentrate on that effective linkage should be uh, there with society infrastructure should be there incentives for students they should give fees viable scholarship prizes and other motivational incentive should be there good governance should be there participatory governance okay decentralized governance should be there all that is need of the hour strategic plan so we should all do brainstorming sessions you ask your student how do you want iipa college to be after 5 years how do you want iipa college to be after 15 years conduct a kind of competition make him think big make him dream about the institution strategic plan is needed then period i mean periodic administrative and academic audit is needed see we think that what we are doing is the best you should have an external member coming and pointing out the kind of deficiencies if at all we have any so there should be auditing mechanism we should be able to take corrective measures all that is needed then we must nurture good practices distinctiveness should be there green practice should be there so all that is really needed you may ask me what is needed from our side one is we need commitment unless you are committed to the growth of the college college cannot do it it is not the management's job to have an institution of of excellence it should all be what through commitment then team building should be there but unfortunately there is not team building at all if there are four people in the department there are six uh, i mean groups at least so people don't go together there should be cohesion there should be cooperation second then you should be able to plan quality assurance activity you must have calendar of activities you should be able to have targets so well i mean prepared scheduled of activity should be there arriving at an institutional quality model there should be continuous improvement uh, i mean there if we had written five books last year we should be able to improve it by two more seven if you had published 50 articles this year it should be 60 articles so continuous improvement should be there 
willingness to adopt changes teachers don't i mean adopt to changes that easily they resist changes but we should willingly adopt to changes then we should march towards excellence and we should be able to i mean meet global challenges what are the quality dimensions tangible competence should be there attitude should be there content should be there delivery should be there there should be reliability please remember one thing quality assurance does not happen by accident it has to be planned quality is not a single thing it's an aura it's an atmosphere an overpowering feeling that the institution is doing everything good there should be continuous improvement please remember one thing two things are needed one is ensuring compliance the other one is regular improvement so you please ensure compliance to whatever ugc or mhrd or aict or ncte or uh, mci does then see that there is regular improvement also this is the quality assessment model that you should have for any institution student should be best you should have a good curriculum faculty members should be competent and experienced laboratories and other facilities should be excellent you must have well defined processes in place facilities should be good support mechanism should be excellent so get the feedback only then you will have best output okay so improve upon the i mean based on the output based on the feedback you just try to what do some kind of corrective mechanisms so please remember one thing you will have a good institutions in the country you will have best institutions in the country the future i would say that best way to predict the future is to create it if you want to create best college in this country the best way is to slog for it you have a quality system in place you have quality teachers in place you have quality students in place only then you will be able to have a quality institution quality institution is the need of the hour so that we are able to have what a future conquered by us so i do not want to take much of your time i just would like to close i will help i mean uh, expect you to post your questions uh, for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes so that i can answer all your queries if there are any questions i'll be very happy i am sure that <coughs> you will have enough more more to have so i look forward to uh, listening to you for interaction with you so over to the participants thank you so much sir uh, we have got an overwhelming response uh, for the session the participants were unanimous about the uh, need of the session and how uh, well you uh, put out the things and we have lot of questions too i think i'll start uh, from uh, uh, the question from adonis po and it is in tamil yeah pustakangalum katturigalum veliiduvadiley kavanam selithum aasiriyargalal maanavargalin nalanin akkare kolla mudiyum endra nenikkir nenikkirgala ayya and uh, she has also told that aasiriyar pani enbadu api score mattum mayamittada ayya adu mattum da nan sir madam innikku irukra state sir, you can, can answer in tamil no no sir you can answer in english because we have participants english. from all okay. over india yeah fine so the thing is they are asking should we concentrate only on the research research is only one aspect there are see your education has become multi dimensional teaching research extension and placement these are the four dimensions saying that i'll to concentrate only on teaching it's really not good you have got to do multitasking you have to do multitasking so if you are concentrating 60% on teaching at least 30 i mean 20% you should concentrate on research 20% you must concentrate on the extension and on placement but neglecting research is not really good so let us not think that only teaching is our responsibility teaching is only one of the responsibilities there are other responsibilities also which should be equally uh, i mean uh, concentrated upon fine next question next question in, uh, is from bala subramaniam sir uh, no. there there have been lot of discussion in the chat box itself about the quality of research now okay. and uh, he is pointing out that even nac is not concerned about the quality of research criterion 3 collects qualitative information quantitative information about research instead of qualitative side Uh, peer mm. members take note of number of developing skills needed uh, but 
uh, even uh, and it continues even uh, and other for, uh, even bodies like ugc nac and other funding agencies look only for number instead of uh, skills and uh, it goes on oh, so we, uh, we can't make a sweeping statement that nac is not bothered about quality it's not like that nac has 25 years of existence i have some directly and indirectly association with nac let me tell it very uh, this thing they take into as i mean uh, consideration of all aspects they don't say uh, we don't say that they are compromising on quality quantitative parameters are also required we can't uh, i mean do away with quantitative parameters okay let us not uh, have gain an impression that nac is really not con i mean uh, i mean uh, concentrated with or they are not really concentrating on quality they are actually compromising such things let us not make it please remember one thing ours is a country with lot of diversities we cannot have one size fit all uh, type of evaluation system for this country so ugc nac nir of all that really is drive i mean uh, they are doing their best to, to see an evolve a system which will really suit to many so quality is really not compromised i'll tell you there will be complaint against everything for example impact factor you can't have impact factor for a tamil journal or english journal okay science is different from engineering engineering is defined from uh, humanities and all that but like within that available things what best is really can be done is being done by academicians so i'll please remember one thing in all these bodies whether it is ugc or in i mean aict or nac academicians are only there so we really know what the difficulties we are i mean exp i mean experiencing we try to do our best so nac is not uh, compromising on quality they are trying to do everything to uphold quality and in the coming years there will be many more such agencies which will really be concentrating in quality so let us not worry about it as a teacher if we are really more qualified i mean uh, uh, i mean worried about quality definitely our institutional ranking and institutional quality will go up thank you next thank you sir and uh, the question from madhu sudarshan kolapen sir what about the uh, what is your opinion about the introduction of foreign investment in higher education as well as the impact of uniform syllabus throughout the nation uniform syllabus on the uniform and see there is ugc and other bodies are giving only a minimum i mean like a common minimum program a kind of guidelines they are giving they are not saying that it should only be it's not it's a prescribed syllabus if that is the case you don't require any board of studies for any uh, university or an autonomous college okay they are giving that this is a guideline so to that extent possible at least to about 80% you can have the common uh, syllabus and the 20% can be suiting to your need regional need or state need and all that so that is needed now another question regarding the foreign investment now this is a liberalization globalization and privatization area lpg of course the slogan has slightly changed after the covid 19 now our prime minister has said that we have to concentrate i mean uh, we have to promote indigenous things and all that so there may be a shift in policy and all that but we can't say that you should not uh, i mean uh, the yeah, foreign institutions cannot come the problem is foreign institutions coming and starting our own programs like ba uh, be btech and all that competing with our own good institution is not good if they have some unique program they are most welcome in fact academicians across the country they are giving their opinion government will take definitely a good decision and we can't do away with the other institutions okay into our country any inflow of knowledge should be welcomed next thank you sir and what is your opinion on uh, ugc's announcement that students can join another degree during their regular studies or it should be they are not compelling to have to this thing if student wants to see please remember one thing i went to for a nac related assessment to one of the colleges in telangana after the assessment is over i wanted i mean two students really came to me you know what did they say they said two things i want to say i said after sending everybody i just listen to the students two things he said one is like uh, uninspiring what uh, teachers unchallenging question paper these are the two things they said so these uh, for example they said that challenge curriculum is not challenging you are concentrating only on the weak students how about the students who are really clever do we have any care for a clever program we don't have why because the, our focus is only on the weak students and the remedial programs and such things so if a boy can really manage with two things why don't you equip him 
we don't force everybody to go for dual degree okay so a boy if he wants and uh, equip himself during that period uh, engineering plus commerce engineering plus economics engineering plus law jolly well he can do so there is nothing wrong in it likewise chemistry if he wants to start an industry so chemistry with commerce he can very much do so let let us not force people at the same time if he wants to uh, start doing something more let him do it government is not forcing it only gives a opens up a new avenue so it should be welcomed and next, uh, next question in ugc care listed journals many reputed journals have not found place uh, your take on this issue no 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 that, that see if it's a reputed journal you can write to ugc ugc revises the list of journals see such committees are filled only with academicians they look into all aspects okay so don't worry about it if there's a particular journal is actually missing you can always bring it to the notice of ugc ugc does not say no to all our demands they have a willing ear so you can easily approach them absolutely no issue so again uh, one more thing ugc care list journals was bought to uh, prevent this paid journal uh, yeah, but now predatory journals predatory journals but even yeah. now that's happening you get uh, you give money they, uh, agencies have come out where they will help you to publish in ugc care journals it's all happening but uh, we should try to see as teachers we should take a kind of pledge not to encourage these kind of practices you will go only for uh, web of science index journal or scopus index journal or uh, like uh, ugc care listed journals why do you want to go into a shortcut mechanism see some of see if they lure we should not fall prey into their uh, strategies okay so look for quality and uh, like uh, encourage only quality publications and so you Next. were telling about clubs nss vrc etc yeah, there is a yeah. question from uh, jan uh, students are bothered only about their marks and even some students are depressed that uh, they are asked to participate in the club activities and they are not getting time to participate uh, to study and how to motivate them sir we are not here only to produce bookworms all round holistic development should be there students should care for society they should be able to live uh, with their uh, neighboring uh, neighborhood in unity so they should have patriotism patriotism they should have service mentality with such things only you have nss ncc yrc red ribbon club and all that so encourage all that holistic participation is needed there are also students who say that we don't have avenues at all to exhibit our talents how are we to satisfy those people so colleges are not really to make the missions okay we should be able to or we should be able to train them to have coping skills so diverse avenue should be there don't force him if he doesn't want to do it leave him but you should create enough and more avenues for him to what uh, i mean bring out the innate talent okay he should be able to live in the society he should be able to live in harmony with others all that he will get leadership quality how will he get if you don't have such avenues it should all be there next uh cooked up and fake documents produced at the time of nac visit uh, visit satisfy panel to uh, give nac status what is your idea about this and again there was a question that uh, what are uh, how to overcome the practical problems which we face during the nac sir the institutions are self correcting mechanisms as education institution we should not really go for this kind of cooked up fake and all that so if we as academicians are going to do such things then uh, like uh, there is no point in blaming politicians and others institution should take a lead and say that we are honest we will not tell lies we will not produce fake documents and all that see that i'll tell you it's a shame that we have a dvv in nac that data verification validation mechanism that itself is a proof that the institutions are indulging in so over and above if you are bent upon cheating and what is the kind of grade that we are going to do whom are we going to satisfy by getting a a plus grade na you may get a a plus grade by nac but will people accept tell me they know that you are fake so such colleges will, will be only frowned upon so we will have to set up a standard for ourselves don't think that nac has to give certificate that is why i said you should think beyond nac whether nac see what is upright or um, what is right to us we should do it do not worry about other things this nac grading and other things are very small we should stand tall in values 
thank you sir absolutely Next. right can we ask for one educational system for all with exception only for lingual and cultural sensibilities instead of cbsc state board and so on and i should add to the, uh, that sir because uh, what we face is that swayam uh, the credit transfer of swayam courses is not uh, implemented in our part of uh, in our university so don't you right. think that there should be one universe that, that, uh, that is university's uh, mistake when government of india has said that there should be credit transfer facility they should obey it if they are not doing it we have to bring it to sir, the notice of the ugc lot of process is there uh, ska and uh, senate etc so if one uh, rule is uh, one suggestion is brought by the university why can't you implement it uh, implement it it has to be implemented it has to be implemented madam there may be difficulties you will have to overcome all those difficulties we should whatever uh, ugc says it will be in the interest of the students they must have deliberated number of times so let us give that such kind of uh, i mean avenues to the students online learning is something which is the order of the day how can you deny that uh, opportunity to the students at all let us not do it so if there are problems in the university we should tell the university to uh, overcome those kind of problems fine next it's like one uh, yes or no question uh, we will create a new uh, sorry uh, kindly give your give your opinion in our education system in india whether our education system in india is traveling uh, through the right path to upgrade the students for their future life you wait for some time the new education policy is coming a committee headed by kasturi rangan and dr kasturi rangan has done a right job you right there will be a remedy for all your questions we will probably going in the right direction so after the implementation of new education policy then you can i mean uh, ask your question till then we will really wait for what is in store for us okay and uh, they have made an, uh, a very good assessment and all that and uh, the kind of uh, efforts they have put in is also good so let us all wait for the new education policy which will be implemented in uh, uh, the nearest possible future and uh, iqsd uh, all parameters help find the quality of institutions or teachers can you please suggest how these parameters help find quality of a student quantitative students walk away but not sure of quality sir if the process is good the product will be good so naturally the process uh, we are ensuring a good process we expect good products also so naturally it will be good don't worry if there is a, if, if we all of us are good teachers then won't we be able to produce good students eh? it will happen so don't let us not worry about it can the ugc and mhrd take stringent actions on those institutions which fail to fulfill the basic infrastructure policing is not see i'll tell you in this country for every 13000 student there is one policeman okay so you don't expect police station in every uh, street no so <clears throat> higher education institution is a self correcting mechanism like judiciary <clears throat> you don't require any monitoring mechanism at all we have to be like what law abiding we have to be really what truthful i mean and we are such things are expected of education institution if such things are not there in education institutions where will you find that so let us not really i mean uh, this kind of policing thing should not be there supervising mechanism should not be there at all okay without anybody telling us we should ourselves be able to do things so towards that we should travel that is the heritage of this country okay this country is known for only such things thank okay, you next and uh, dr shobha asik ask this question please suggest these plus courses with degree plus courses with degree degree see plus courses in terms of industry ready i said that see one suppose if it is a conventional degree for example if you say ma tamil or ma english have some journalism related courses okay suppose if you are doing something in uh, science do something in ipr okay science with commerce so engineering with law science with law so depending upon the interest the kind of uh, i mean uh, plan the student has got he should be able to have either in allied disciplines or supportive disciplines it can be computer based it can be non computer based also so since the world world whole world is going towards automation it may be like artificial intelligence augmented reality big data analytics forecasting optimization methods all these things irrespective of discipline we may probably have to teach at the undergraduate level see our uh, uh, I mean sooner with the introduction of new education policy it is going to be a four year degree 
which means we will have two foundation courses. It will be Bachelor of Liberal Arts. It is not going to be focused on chemistry, physics, BCom, and all that. It is going to be figure. So your engineering is going to be again uh, general engineering. It may not be electrical engineering, electronics and communication, mechatronics, such things and all. It is going to be general. Okay. Now what is happening? A boy after finishing B civil, he goes for a software engineering. Okay. Such things are actually. So why don't you give a general degree? If he wants to specialize, let him do it at the level, the final year. Specialize. Take some extra credits. Take some extra courses. So do that. So let us all wait for the new education policy. There will be enough and more avenues for all these things. So uh, I'm sure that there will be a positive growth in the coming and, days. And there are a lot of negative about comments about the research. In some cases, <laughs> without universe supervisors, colleges are running research courses and award degree with full prevailing support system. Part-time scholars without attending 30 days with supervisors are also yeah, 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 yeah. All that will go. Only universities will be able to yes, have that, research that degree. Yes, that is there. Sure. Whether the degree uh, research should be limited with universities and universities should not give permission to self-financing in, uh, institutions to offer research programs. Such comments we, have also we come. We can't make a sweeping statements. There are some colleges which are doing extremely well in research also. Some are doing much better than the universities also. So that is why I said, uh, like it all case to case, stay, we have to make. Uh, anyway, there are number of colleges in Tamil Nadu which are doing really good in research also. Okay. There are also some universities which are not really good doing good in uh, research also. So we can't do. See, we'll have to probably have a balanced view on all that. Okay. But quality of research should not be. Your PhD should not be. Please have degree program. Okay. Expansion for PhD should not be. Please have degree. So it should be quality oriented. So we should be able to emphasize on quality. So it should produce a real impact on the industry or on the society or on the people. So there should be something. So just uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, cut and paste should not be the philosophy of research. Okay, so as guide, as student, we should take a vow that we will not compromise on the quality of research. So if individually and collectively, if we take such a stand, the quality of research will definitely improve. Uh, Next. Another question, please elaborate the concept of lifelong learning. Madam, you are asking me to take another session. I'll do that later. You ask him to give my uh, con give me uh, give him the contact details. I'll definitely uh, respond to him. Anything okay. else? Uh, there I'm was, so happy uh, that you could really comprehend. I do not know you. What is your name, madam? Uh, myself. I'm Savita. You, anyway, done a very excellent job. You have compiled everything, and you are asking uh, uh, the uh, questions and eliciting my views also. Hats off uh, to you. And uh, one comment was there that you are talking about the quality, and some colleges are not even giving are not even giving salary now. That's and, there. The UGC has said that, that they should go. I mean, they should do away with this kind of practice, and they should give. There are a lot of issues. See, if you look at uh, from the point of view of the colleges, they say that they do not have money at all. I don't know, like, uh, but it is better that uh, this is a difficult situation for everybody. So teachers have to be supported. You can't make uh, teachers' family suffer. No, they can't starve. They have they, they to have a family. So to the extent possible, every student, I mean, every teacher also needs to be supported. Supreme Court also said we cannot force, but at the same time, you cannot say that they should not be given salaries. So to the extent possible, they should all be supported. See, fellow human beings. See, this is a, a country which really spoke on Vasudeva Kudumbakam. Okay. So world is one family. Should we not really take, should we not take care of our neighbors? We should not, should we not take care of our, uh, uh, I mean, uh, fellow human beings? So money should not be the only thing. So uh, humanity should uh, be for, should be the forefront. Okay. So we should care for everybody. We should never allow, if you, even if one boy or one man dies of starvation, we will set the whole world into fire. This is what Subramani Bharati said. Okay, so let us take everybody along with us. We will satisfy everybody's needs. Okay, not to their greeds, at least to the basic needs. We have to do it. State government is doing, central government is doing, philanthropists are going, political parties are doing, as individuals also, we will do it. Next. And four points mentioned in 10 are six sigma concepts, but many don't know what is six sigma. And is NAC only focuses these four factors. Oh, I, I, no, let us, I think almost I have said everything. No yes. doubt to worry. Okay, next. 
and uh, one uh, suggestion was there that this lecture should be recorded and sent to mhrd but i, uh -huh. I think somewhere <laughs> the participants have missed <clears throat> that these are the uh, uh, suggestions put forward by mhrd itself yes over and above also i have said uh, something but uh, i think it will reach mhrd also i'm yes. sure that uh, i mean uh, your views of uh, academicians like me reaches them they take enough and more care i'm sure that i'm also willing to contribute to uh, the nation's uh, development no i'm committed to that so if there is a request from mhrd i'll definitely put forth my views in a very candid way so that uh, the best of us is actually uh, projected benefited thank you uh, sir participants were asking for your ppt that your ppt should be uh, sent and uh... Yeah, I'll say, share. I think you have already. No, YouTube. It is already there. I I replied that it is yeah. there in the YouTube. It's there in the YouTube. Otherwise, you give me uh, this thing. Contact details. I'll mail. Probably you can uh, get it from the other thing. Okay, sir. Mm. Okay, sir. Thank so, you. So, in the absence of any further questions, let uh, me th thank uh, Yappa College and SSUN for uh, how many participants are there totally? Ah, uh, and not. I have to look, sir. Uh, Contact details. I, uh, mm. So in the uh, chat please. box we had about uh, chat from around two uh, two not two participants, but when we look after there will be one uh, on an average of one point one k. One point one k, yeah. 1K, oh, yes. good, good, good. So I'll be happy. This is I think my contact uh, details are uh, given in this. So you can probably this is the contact details. You can note if you want to correspond with me. You can. So I'll be able to answer more queries and I'll. untouchability is a crime so let us all keep in touch so stay touch stay in touch stay safe so thank you everybody for your patient listening thank you once again to the iepa college and ssun for uh, giving me an opportunity a platform for sharing my views on quality aspects of higher education thank you all thank you everybody thank you thank, thank you so you. much thank sir you. it was very comprehensive and uh, it was very useful and uh, i'm sure that uh, this video will be as this video is uploaded in the youtube this will be there for uh, there as a reference point for uh, many thank you Please, so much uh, send me the link or the uh, recorded version also yes sir thank yes you. i'll send and you. you can see the chats also that we can have the live replay yeah, of yeah, chats yeah. also so you can you can please look into that because there were a lot of thank positive you, comments you. about your session if there is any opportunity i'll definitely visit your college and i'll have continued yeah. interaction with ssun okay thank you thank it's you a pleasure so thank, you. Thank, thank, you. So thank you thank you so much thank sir thank you and uh, now let me invite uh, 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 dr uh, indrani the president ssun tamil nadu state to uh, interact with the participants ma'am please ah good evening uh, uh, good evening to one and all who have joined the online fdp organized by ssun tamil nadu chapter in association with three ayappa college for women nagur kovil today's speech you are it is uh, overhand sir ah. today's yes, speech sir. is yes, the need of the hour okay. i felt your lecture as a motivational speech and in this you listed all some problem in the audio yes yes uh what the challenge and only the challenges how to meet the challenges what should we do so for that uh, everybody knows that we have to maintain the quality but uh, the quality you gave um you narrated the 10 meaning of a quality and why should we maintain the quality that is a sustainable one it should be so yeah. both were superb sir just thank you thank you madam uh, that list as well as why should we maintain the quality the answer for this itself will motivate the students and okay. along with this you gave the importance of inculcating value system among the students is also explained well that is the need of the day yeah and in your lecture sir each and every sentence or even each word is correctly is a correct choice and one should listen your lecture once in a month at least to sustain uh -huh. <laughs> sir Thanks. all the informations are provided you are too generous madam <laughs> no sir no sir no as i listen to it thank you thank you you have any doubt you have an answer in that our motive itself is not to list the problems we should always give the solution 
so yeah, yeah. you gave it and uh, it is uh, really motivated no one will think that this one and a half hours is uh, uh, just uh, for the um, um, what to say for the certificate their knowledge is uh, increased they they will definitely try to increase or improve their quality sir thank you so much thank you thank Even you sir yes sir um uh, look forward to have your lectures more and more sir thank you so thank much you, thank for you thank you thank you madam for your time as well as the energy thank you sir thank you madam thank you thank you madam thank you sir thank you so um, we have uh, thank you so much indrani ma'am uh, mm. i should express I my like, sincere thanks to you I in particular like to say a few more words sure sure ma'am sure ma'am just uh, two more minutes okay you... ma'am okay we usually conduct a seminars workshops etc on topics um, like value education vedic mathematics autonomy of education etc in various colleges during the lockdown period we wanted to stay connected with the academic fraternity at least digitally and continue to do our bit in taking the rich indian knowledge to the broader society initially we started with a series of lectures on um, indianizing education vedic mathematics spoken hindi value education etc and the response was overwhelming and within no time we were approached by a college in coimbatore to conduct a faculty development program in association with them and it was a grand success and from then onwards there had been a request from several colleges to conduct ftps in association with them thus the journey that started off with a series of lectures turned out to be a series of ftps within a short span of time even in terms of uh, technology we have kept evolving over time what we had st- when we have started with a free version of zoom with just 100 participants and 40 minutes meeting time we have come a long way we first upgraded to a pro version of zoom and then to facebook google meet and now even youtube live streaming with your um, with the association of your college these success stories would not have been possible without the cooperation and encouragement given by the college management staff members and the coordinators it is a uh, high time for us to thank the indigenous knowledge of our mother bharat to our children to achieve this we should first enrich our staff members about our tradition and cul- our tradition and culture and equip them to pass on the knowledge to the children i take this opportunity to thank the management principal staff members and the nac coordinator of sri ayappa college for having associated with us and organizing this ftp on behalf of all the members of association i would like to appreciate their intent and would like to request continuous association with association together let us conduct more such programs and much um, bigger things like introducing papers on indigenous knowledge formally in the curriculum last but not the least i would like to thank all the participants of the program for taking out time and attending this 